Hey everybody, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Robert Kennedy the third RK3 in the house right now, and I am getting ready to do something with one of my amazing brothers. I haven't done this in a little bit. We do interviews. I've done interviews, but um, it's a pleasure to have my dude, Mike Powell. <laughs> Mike, what's happening, brother? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good to be on with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's this is this is awesome, man. I think we've we've been looking to do this for a little bit. We we connected, my goodness, several years ago. We sat yep. in person um a couple of times last year as well. And we're like, yo, we've got to do something <laughs> together. Yeah. We gotta yeah. hang out because both of us are in this space where we really work with leaders and we work with organizations yeah. and their leaders to help them not just become better leaders, but better communicators as well. Yeah. So share with us what, a little bit about what, what you got going on, man. Yeah. So, um, you know, thanks a lot. We definitely have been talking about this for a while. I'm, I'm so excited. I, I say, look at, look at all these uh, opportunities that have come as a result of this pandemic. You know, we focus so much on the negatives, negative things that have happened as a result right. of it, but a whole lot of good things have been going on. And, and this is, this is one of them. So, so thanks a lot for uh, helping us put this together and pull this off. Um, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a consultant. Um, we have a small business, um, the Powell Consulting Group. Um, it's a family business. So, you know, my dad started the company back in 86 after he retired from the army. And um, we've been, been grinding ever since. Um, we focus on um, organizational development, um, in training. So I'm a, uh, a business coach. I'm a, an executive coach. I'm a facilitator. I'm a consultant. I'm a trainer. You know, my role changes, um, you know, depending on what day it is and what time it is and <laughs> where I am. Um, so, you know, I work with leaders, helping them become more effective, helping them find solutions in their organizations. Um, you know, but we really like to focus on the, the human capital side of the enterprise yeah. and how to make sure that people are working together. I always say that it doesn't matter how much money an organization has, how many, um, you know, smart people they have and how much technology you have available to them. If people aren't able to communicate and work well together, if people don't take leadership um, as a responsibility and as a function that is shared by everybody, the organization is not going to be successful. Money and smarts and talents and technology and all that stuff can only get you so far. So so we're on the side of the house that, you know, helps organizations and helps people come together so that they can work effectively. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I, I see that we've got some people on as you're coming on. Just type in the comments. Just let us know where you're logging in from, because we want to get some of your comments on the screen here. We definitely want this to be interactive. We want to share. Oh, cool. And Mike and I are just going to go back and forth a little bit. But yep. we want to see if you've got questions on 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 in the in the in the LinkedIn live this morning, we want to make sure that we can take some of those and and answer some of them some of those and just really have a conversation with everybody so um as it says in my background here we're talking about staying connected as a leader so mike just shared a little bit about what he's up to and i am a speaker trainer as well in the intersection of leadership and communication my organization my company is uh kinetic communications and okay cool we got tanya morris from atlanta logging in love it thanks tanya yeah all right so that that's what we do we we work with organizational leaders who need to deliver critical messages and we help them do that with confidence so okay kate strunk from laurel maryland cool all right jody krangle all right oh jody and i we have a podcast interview later cool so she's listening in from Toronto, north of Toronto. Wow. All right. Cool. All right. Hey, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so let, oh, let's, we got some more people. Uh, Claudia Kalu from Be More in between meetings and had to connect to gain some insights. All right. Cool. Well, All you right. know, speaking of insights, brother, let's, let's see if we can get rocking and rolling on this. Yeah. I'm going to share my screen and yep. we're just, we're just going to jump back and forth. So while I'm getting my screen set up, why don't we talk a little bit about um, why we felt the need to yeah. really talk about this topic, how, how to stay connected? I know you talked about um, pandemic and, and all of those yeah. things, but you know, why now and, and what are the things that we really need to 
share with with leaders? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think obviously, you know, everybody in this pandemic is is being forced to alter the way that they work and alter yeah. the way that they engage. Um, you know, our teams look a little bit different. Our organizations look a little bit different. Even our our leadership styles have to be a little bit different. And so. Um, what I thought would, would be important is to really talk about how to connect as a leader, right? You know, it's 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 great to be a leader. It's great to be able to communicate with people. It's great to disseminate messages and 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 make sure that you know you're pushing the right buttons and the trains are moving. But yeah. you know, I think that you know we want folks to be able to do a little bit more than just communicate and share, right? We want you to be able to connect with your people, especially during this time when, you know, there's so much um, anxiety um, about yeah. this, yeah, about this environment. And so, you know, while we're trying to still be productive, we also have to deal with the reality that people are really scared, right? Yeah. It, it's a lot of um, changes that are happening. And so as leaders, you know, people are looking to us to kind of set that tone. And so, you know, more than just the person that's directing traffic, you know, a leader's role is also to make sure that they are giving their people the things that they need so that they can still feel good so that they can still work and be productive and be effective. So, you know, that's why I think that this is important because this new environment is, is causing us to have to do new things. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's start with our list here, man. We're going to talk about the top 10 things that yeah. leaders need to be able to do to stay connected in this virtual environment. And it's it's so critical, man. I I've I've been getting a lot of questions from leaders because they are not sure of several things. Number one, some of them are not sure about the technology <laughs> because they're like, oh, right. we got we got to have these virtual meetings. And then right. they, they also they're having these meetings and they're trying to do them the same way like they would do it in person. Right. They, they think right. some of the right. same, you know, and, and, and the communication is off and they're not sure yeah. when and what and how. So, yeah. So let's let's talk about that, man. So let's yeah. let's do our top 10 things that yeah. leaders need to know to stay connected. So why don't you start off? Sure. 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 So for for me, the first one is that leaders have to be flexible. Yeah. We have to be flexible. You know, this is a new environment for many people. Um, and the way that we have operated um, in our traditional environments may be a little bit different. Um, one of the models that I really, really enjoy teaching and sharing with folks is the situational leadership model. Yeah. Um, and in the situational leadership model, if you if you can see the graphic on your screen, um, really talks about uh, different ways that leaders can show up. And I think in this environment, what we have to keep in mind is that when situations change as leaders, we have to change as well. Right. Yeah. And so we're in a different environment. And so, you know, you can have a person who is a complete rock star. Right. They can be your top performance. You see them every single day. You know, they can get it done. And then you switch them into a new environment and they're absolutely lost. Right. They don't feel the connection with their teammates. Yeah. Um, they're not able to get the face time that they're used to. And so, you know, as a leader, uh, you have to adjust your style. And so it's it's really, really important for leaders to be flexible. Right. You know, you have to decide whether you want to be someone who is directing folks. Are yeah. you coaching them? Are you delegating? Are you nurturing their talent and helping them ask questions and figure things out on their own? What is it that you need to do? for your folks to be effective right now. And I think right. um, that flexibility um, is something that's really, really, really key. Um, you know, I would love for us to have more time and I could go into greater details about situational leadership. But, you know, basically what you have to understand is that when you're in a different environment, the situation may change, the needs yeah. for your people may change. And so we want to make sure that leaders are aware that the style that they use, the behaviors that they demonstrate, uh, while it has been effective in one situation, in this mm -hmm. new situation, in this new environment, it may not be the same. So even if you're not changing, at least take some time to just assess the situation in the environment to yeah. see if what you're doing is still working. 
Wow. I love what Robin is saying. Robin Linton is saying a couple of things. She said, uh, situational leadership, a wonderful concept that leaders should increase their awareness about. And she's also saying not all leaders can do that effectively and maintain yeah. his or her confidence. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not easy. It's, it's not easy to pivot. You know, I think um, based on the research, um, I think only 50 percent of leaders mm -hmm. are really able to use all of these skills. Right. We all have our what I call our, our Romans 12 point font. Right. Our default style that we use <laughs> in every situation. Um, but, you know, we can be flexible. Um, it's yeah. just something that we have to to be intentional about and continue to practice. So practicing flexibility is is definitely key in this environment. Yeah, I'm glad you said point font when you said romans 12 i thought you were talking about this bible verse <laughs> <laughs> well well we could but that 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 would be another that would be another session <laughs> awesome man so so let's let's go to the next one so here's here's mine man so you've got practicing flexibility here's mine yep. um communicating with transparency yeah. Communicating yeah. transparently. So here's what's happening. There's a lot of there are a lot of leaders or a lot of people in organizations that they have information, but because they're uncertain about the information, they withhold. And yeah. so there's a lot of leaders, they, they try to act like or seem like they know all of it or they've got everything together because they feel like if I fall apart a little bit, or if I look like I don't know what's going on, or if I portray uncertainty at all, then I'm not going to keep my people. I'm going to, you know, they're going to run away or they're not going to yeah. trust me or they're not going to yeah. do. That. So they, they then try to appear like, yep, I've, I, I, I know it all. I've, I've got it yep. all together. Yep. And yep. especially in this time where people are uncertain, they don't necessarily need to know perfection. What yep. they do need to know is that you're not going to give up. What they exactly. do need to know is that no matter what's going on and what's happening, that you're going to push through and you got their back in Absolutely. all of this, right? So if, if something happens to them, you're, you're not just going to chuck them away. So how do you communicate transparently? Sometimes yeah. transparently is saying, listen, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that, but here's what I'm committed to. I'm committed sure, sure. to having some information to for you by Friday or at least connecting and communicating with you again on Friday so that we 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 have an expectation. Yeah, right? We yeah. we got this expectation. So so it's really it is and and people don't need to know and have all of the answers or know or, or need to know that feel like you have a right and wrong answer immediately. They just yeah, need to yeah. feel heard and they need to feel like they're not the only ones that are going through crazy at this time yeah. <laughs> and that you as a leader are human, you understand it, and that you actually have feelings and can feel what they feel. So you, you, you've got to be transparent and letting them know that, that uh, it, it's okay to not have it all together. And you know what's what's funny what's funny about that is is people can see right through your stuff anyway. Yeah. So you might as well, you know, when you don't have it together, it comes through, right? You may think you're hiding, you may think you're getting over on folks, yeah. but they can tell. People are smart and so, you know, you all you're doing is just just destroying your credibility yeah. when, when folks feel like you aren't um, you know, being being uh, upfront with them. Yeah. So I, I see a great question here. Kate, Kate Strunk says, do you think some level of hold bag is, is okay? Or is the idea for 100% transparency? Okay. So when I say transparency, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about telling people all your business and every moment and every piece and aspect of your life. All right. right what I right. am saying is not um, being inauthentic with emotion. What, what I am saying is um, sharing with them that stuff happens in your world, too. Yep. Right. And that you don't have it all together and that you don't have all the answers. We're, we're all operating with some level of uncertainty right now. None of us knows what's going to happen in September. None of us does. 
and and yeah. it's and it's okay to say that listen i don't know I, I don't know the answer to that however here's what we are doing right now here's what we are doing today and yeah. here's here's what we're committed to continuing to build yeah you know yeah. And, and in some and, ways and, you go ahead mike yeah and i was gonna say that's as far as you really needed to go you know yeah. you you, you can say, hey, this is what I know. This is what I can tell you. This is what you can expect from me. And as long as you're following through on those things, yeah. then, you know, people can can honor that. Right. But it's yeah. it's when people start making promises that they can't deliver when they're Ooh. hiding things, when they're not on top of things. Yeah. You know, that's when as as uh, who said that, Jody, that's when those BS meters start going <laughs> off and those alerts start going off. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. So let's move. Let's move. We let go, go to sure. your next one. I mean, we got these numbered, but we're just doing these out of order. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So the next one is is pay attention to process. Pay attention to process. Um, you know that model um, is you know a figure of an iceberg, and many of us are familiar with the iceberg metaphor. And if you look at that uh, graphic. Um, only 10% of that iceberg is actually visible, right? Yeah. You know, and that's what typically organizations focus on when they're trying to solve problems, when they're trying to get results. They're looking at the goals and how do we achieve our goals and our strategies and our business processes and problem solving and all those things are important. But it's the processes that are below the surface that are usually the things that trip us up. And so, mm -hmm. you know, right now our processes have changed. Right. We're in right. a virtual environment. Um, you know, our, our traditional things that we have gotten used to our creature comforts, all of those things have changed. And so it's important now more than ever to pay attention to the process, pay attention to whose voices you're hearing. You know, what are those signs that you are seeing? You know, what are the warning signs? If you're a virtual leader and you have um, employees that you're working with, you know, how can you tell? when they may be having some problems. You know, what are some of those red flags that let you know up, oh, you know, something's going on. Hey, this this guy's supposed to log into this meeting and he always seems to have uh, problems with his computer or I'm sending him a, a, a Skype message and I don't get a response for 20 or 30 minutes. You know, those are process issues that we have to pay attention to. And, you know, it's one thing to be able to walk over to somebody's desk or be able to sit in a meeting and see people's reaction. But, you know, when you're in a virtual environment, you don't have those same opportunities. So those process things are still the most important parts of the um, business performance. And those are the things that can trip us up. And so if, if we're not paying attention to process, then we're missing opportunities to improve. Nice, nice. So Jody is saying maybe it's time to pivot on some of your processes that will hopefully serve you better heading to the new future. Yeah, absolutely, that, that's, absolutely, that's, that's absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So if you're watching this and and you believe this is a valuable conversation so far, I want to encourage you to share it. Go ahead and go ahead up to the I think there's like the three dots and share that with with other people so that they can join in the conversation and they can even get. Uh, LinkedIn famous, right? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to say people like Instagram famous. Instagram famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can come on here and put their comments on. We can make them LinkedIn famous. <laughs> yeah, we gonna have some LinkedIn influencers today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's awesome, man. So let's go to the next one. So you said process, and here's my next one. It is connect through storytelling. Absolutely. Ooh, ooh. Connect yeah. through storytelling. Let me share that screen so everybody can can see that as well. So connecting through storytelling. Now, I share that because in this time of uncertainty, here's what happens. We're, companies are looking at the bottom line. They're looking at data. They're looking at numbers. They're looking at information. They're looking at content. And we're overwhelmed by content. Right. You you wake up in the morning and you hop on CNN or you hop on Fox News or you hop on MSNBC and you just and there's just all of this stuff coming yep. at you, all of this stuff coming at you. And how do you stand out as as a leader? How do you how do you cut through some of the clutter as as a leader? One of the ways to really do that is through emotion. Right. Yeah. What what emotion yeah. can you can you connect to in your people? And one of the best ways to connect 
emotionally is through storytelling. Yep. Storytelling. So when I say storytelling, that could vary. I mean, when I when I use the word storytelling, don't immediately go to once upon a time. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. Don't, don't, because I know when I say storytelling, some leaders are like, ah, fluff. Right. Right. So right. It, it's really it's really about how to connect with the emotion and the why of of people. Right. Because if yeah. you start giving them information that is just not connected to anything and, and they feel like, well, you're just you're just trying to use me. You're just trying to manipulate me. You really don't care about me. <laughs> yeah, you, you're yeah. just you're wanting me to to stay working so that your ends and your means get accomplished. But what are the yeah. what are the what are the journeys that you can take people on? You know, is yeah, there is some once upon a time in it because in some cases you're going to be able you're going to need to share. Okay, this is what happened. I remember in the recession of 2008. This is what our organization was doing. Yeah. This, this is yeah. what happened. This is how we made it through that. These are these are the ways that we kept our head above water. This is these yeah. are the things that we did as a group, as a family, as a community. And, and here is is here's how we did this. Right. So people can connect the current circumstance and current situation to something that has already happened. And they know that, yeah, there's hope, there's success inside of this. There's, you can yeah. navigate the murky waters. So yeah. what what are the stories? What are the stories that you can connect people to in, in, in your organizations? So use, yeah. use storytelling as, as a means of communication for you. Yeah. You know, when I was uh, when I was in college, I was uh, you, you ever been on a, a timeshare presentation, Rob? <laughs> you ever, you ever, you ever? More than I care to admit, brother. Yeah. One of those <laughs> one of those crazy things. You just trying to get your tickets to Bush Gardens or King's Dominion and they <laughs> make yeah. you sit through this long. Well, I used to do that in college and, and, you know, I was down in Williamsburg and, and I didn't know a whole lot, but one thing that I remember vividly yeah. and the most thing, the best thing that I took away from there is telling stories and helping people to understand the value and put them in the experience and put them in the moment. So you can connect with their emotions. You can connect with their humanness. Right. Yeah. And that's what stories help us to do is, is to really connect with people at a different level. You know, obviously a lot of people are, are logic based and you yeah. need data and science and evidence and all of that stuff. But, you know, when you can connect with people at an emotional level, you know, that can take you to places that even logic and numbers can't. So great, great tip. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. So let's, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. We got, it's about nine 25 and we're supposed to be on here yep. till about nine 45. Yep, so let's yep, go with yep, your yep, next yep. one. Yep. So, um, there is a body of work that, that, um, I'm a big believer in it's called the human element. And in the human element, we talk about three main behaviors that people, um, demonstrate and practice. Um, and those behaviors are, uh, inclusion, control, and openness. And so, um, what I wanted to do was just talk a little bit about what these things mean and how they show up in a virtual mm -hmm. environment. And so the first one is to be inclusive, right? Um, you know, there's so much conversation around uh, diversity and inclusion and what that means and what that looks like. But at the end of the day, what inclusion really means is helping people to feel significant. That's really what we want. Wow. We just want to show and we want to show people that we matter. We want to feel like we matter. And so when you are connecting as a virtual leader, how do you make sure that people understand that they matter? You mm -hmm. want to make sure that people understand what are their roles? Yeah. What are the expectations of our roles? You know, what what does this look like? How do I show up? Um, how do you value my contributions? You know, little things like making sure that when you're having a meeting, we can adjust the time for the people who may be on the West Coast and makes it fair for them so they don't have to get up you know, early in the morning to stay connected. You know, some of those things really, really make a difference because people want to feel significant. And when I feel included, when I feel that my perspective has been considered, when I feel like you have my back and um, you have asked me and thought about what I want and what I need, then I feel included. And so whether I can see you or not, as long as you're giving me that sense that, that I'm a part of something, I'm a part of this team, you know, when I'm not around, I'm missed, my contributions are missed, my voice is missed, 
I feel significant. And so we want to create an environment where people cannot just be included just because they are a number or, or they are a face, but they are included because we want to feel their value and want them to feel significant. So how as leaders can we help people to feel significant and help them feel um, included? That's really one of the big challenges of working in this virtual environment. Wow. And that's so important. And one of the trainings that that I that I do, uh, there's a number that I talk about and it says 88 percent of people who leave employment do so for reasons other than finances. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And yeah. so how do you <laughs> and, and so the flip side of that is only 12 percent of people um, leave because they, they they're, they're going to get a raise or more money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. how do you treat people? How do you how do you um, connect with them in such a way that they remain? I'm going to use air quotes here that they remain loyal and that they yeah. remain connected to your organization. Making them feel significant yeah. is a huge part of that. Yeah. Making them feel. Yeah. And, and there's a there's a there's something I think a friend of mine said this to me the other day and my pastor said it about last year sometimes i don't remember who started this but it was the it was the three word phrase i see you yeah i see yep. you right and yep. you know he yep. my pastor was he was he was speaking and he was like listen there's so many people in the world and and everybody's doing stuff everybody's hustling everybody's doing all this these these things but one sometimes you just got to stop and let yeah. people know that i see you Yep, I see yep. you. I see what you're doing and I see all of the, the hard work you're putting in. And I know that you don't always get recognized and I know you don't always feel included or even seen, but I want to let you know that I see you. So yeah. how do yeah. we do that as virtual leaders? You know, even in, in even in the face to face space, we're in, we're in offices yeah. and, and as leaders, we're kind of running by. We're, we're just kind of hustling by. So how do we now in a space where people are more isolated? Let them know that we see them. Yeah. I can't see you, but I see you. Yeah. 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 Claudia, Claudia says that leaders have to be more, um, com most clearly communicate or show in their style that they're inclusive of processes and background and differences. And wow. all those things are, are so important um, because, you know, we're all at home now and we all have different situations, right? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm at home with a seven month old. And so, <laughs> you know, if, if, if you hear a little bit of crying in the background, I need you to make sure that that's okay. I don't want to feel embarrassed about my seven month old crying. I, I need uh, you to see me and understand that. And we'll talk more about that when we move to empathy. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So, so let's go with the next one. So my next one is, Communicate frequently. And I want to share two things here. I want to share two. So the first one is communicate frequently. And the reason you want to communicate frequently is um, because people are isolated, because they're at home, it's so much easier for them to become disconnected. Yeah. And yeah, they're in Zoom meetings. Yeah, they're in... Um, you know, they're, they're, they're on their spreadsheets. Yeah. They're on the computer. Yeah. They're in their, 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 uh, off Microsoft office teams, <laughs> whatever, you know, they're, they're, they're talking and they're, but they can become disconnected from the leadership's message. They can become disconnected from that. So as leaders, you've got to communicate frequently, let them know that you're there, that you're still in the boat with them that you're still in the boat and that you're still working just as hard to, um, to, to really help move things forward. Okay. So I'm going to say the first one I said was, um, communicate frequently, but here's the other one. And here's why I wanted to do this second piece right on it. Um, you've got to also vary your communication. Yeah. Right. So when I say communicate frequently, that does not mean send a newsletter every day only. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. That does not mean say, OK, yep, we're going to hop on a Zoom meeting every Monday or every single day at 830 a.m. or 9 a.m. So as a virtual leader, what are some of the different ways that that uh, that I can connect or communicate with you? So uh, I'm going to okay. ask you some of these, Mike. So I'm going to list some and maybe you can kind of chime in with some of them. So one of the ways that I can communicate 
with with my team is through email. Okay, yep. that's one way. Yep. An yep. Another yep. another way that I might communicate with them is via text. Yep. All right. What else? What 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 else are you thinking? Or, or are you are you? Yeah. Feeling? You know what what I like that uh, I've heard a lot of teams and organizations doing. Um, is using some of those um, technology mechanisms that we kind of use in our personal lives that mm -hmm. maybe we haven't been comfortable doing in our professional lives. So group chats, yep. you know, using, you know, group apps, um, group me or just creating group texts where we can all talk. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Facebook group or an Instagram group or any type of social media group, but some sort of way where we can all connect together through technology at the same time. Those have been really, really good. Yeah. Um, I like the, uh, obviously the Skype calls and the zoom meetups. Um, I think those things are really cool, um, to kind of just change the energy and change the vibe a little bit. Um, so I think, um, I think that works well. Jody, Jody is in, uh, on LinkedIn, she says Slack works really well. Yeah. Um, so that's another another great tool. Yeah. Right. Teresa is saying Slack, LinkedIn Messenger, FB for business. What? What's app? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep, Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. So yep. one of the things I'll point out with that, as far as a communication and varying it as well, uh, I'm going to kind of tie this into the significance or I see you comment. Yeah. One of the things, especially where where businesses are on social media also they're on facebook for business or 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 facebook for the workplace they're on linkedin are there ways of you acknowledging and i'm going to use a, a jamaican term or or bigging up your your people <laughs> on on social media is there a yeah. comment is there something yeah. that you know how back in the day when you used to go in a restaurant and there was employee of the month on the wall, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Can we can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah, with with with, with our people, with with our employees, yeah. so that they feel um, acknowledged, yeah. they feel affirmed, and it's in a public forum. It's a public setting. It's 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 a way of communicating. Hey, uh, let's back go back to this. Hey, I see you. Hey, I see you. Well, your, yeah. your 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 work. What you're doing. Even in right now, even in this time of of uh of uncertainty, yeah, it's uh, we love it. We love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 What else you got, man? Let me see. We've got a couple. We've got, we've got a few questions here. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's so see if we Kate, can... go yeah, ahead. Let me jump on. Kate asked a question about um, connecting and engaging with um, the individual. Um, as opposed to the team. And I think um, in this time, thanks for that question, Kate. I, I, I have really encouraged my um, the, the leaders that I'm working with to use this time to do more one-on-ones. -on I mm -hmm. think one-on-ones are really, really important right now. And, and one-on-ones right now aren't necessarily just about um, business, right? They're not just task-oriented um, conversations. Sometimes it's just a check-in. How are you doing? You know, yeah. how's everything going? I know you had this going on with your family. I know this is going on at home. I know this has been a challenge. You know, is there something that um, I can do to help you out? Um, you know, just to do a quick check in. So obviously, you know, we have our team meetings and we want to make sure that everybody on the team is on the same page and things are moving ahead. But I think leaders have to be a little bit more intentional now about uh, scheduling those one on ones with their staff, because, again, you're not going to just walk by their desk or go to grab coffee or see him in the hallway and just kind of have those casual conversations. You really yeah. have to build in that time intentionally to, to, to connect with your people that way. Nice. Omar says he still connects. He still selects a game changer of the month. Yeah. For his, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Judy says she sends an email. She, or she just sent an email to her IT managers to big up their staff who are working extra hard to keep them connected. Um, Jody said something interesting. She said, keep in mind with social media though, that is they, they own it. Okay. So LinkedIn, Facebook, they own the content. You don't yeah. own it. So they yeah. can yeah. censor at their discretion. Yeah. Just right. something to be aware of. Yeah. Definitely yeah. keep that, that stuff in mind. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, so the next, go ahead, man. Yeah. So I was going to go, cause I know we are moving on time. So I was going to yes. go right on to the next one. Yep. Go for it. So the next one is control. That's the second behavior in this human element model. And with control, 
um, really what we are talking about is how do you empower people, right? How do you make sure people have the access to the information, the tools, the resources, the decision making, the, the shared resources, whatever folks need to do to perform their jobs, we want to make it easy for them to access those things. Yeah. And if they're not able to access it on their own, we want to make sure that we're available and they can reach out to us so that we can get them those things. When we talk about control, um, the feeling that that people want to have with control is competent, right? You want to know that you can do your job and you're smart enough. You have the tools, you have the resources, you have the access in order to do the job. It's so frustrating to go somewhere um, where you're trying to perform and you don't have any, everything you need. You know, you know, I'm sure that you've shown up plenty of times to train Rob and the technology isn't working. The laptop yeah. isn't working. The projection screen isn't working. You know, the live stream, something isn't working. And even though it's not your fault, we still feel like some kind of way, like I don't feel good about this. And so we yeah. want to make sure that even in this virtual environment that we give people the tools that they need so that they can feel smart and equipped to do their jobs. And yeah. so um, that control issue is something that's really, really important to make sure that people are getting the feelings that they need to feel good. When we talked about inclusion, it was about making them feel significant. Yeah. When we're talking about control, it's about making them feel competent and having the tools and the knowledge, the training, the skills that they need to be able to perform their tools, uh, their job successfully. Nice. Nice. You want to go with your next one? Yeah. Yeah. We can jump on in this last this last one. So the last one is openness. Um, so when we're talking about openness, that's creating an environment where people can really um, feel that you like them. You are concerned about them. Mm. You care about them. Um, I love the work of Renee Brown and Dare to Lead and talking about how do you um, as a leader, demonstrate your empathy. You know, how can you make sure that folks who, who are performing for you, you aren't just caring about what they're doing as a performer, but you're caring about what they're doing as a person. And so um, with openness, the more that I can talk about, hey, this is what I need. Hey, listen, I need to take a few extra minutes during lunch because um, you know, I have to have a virtual doctor appointment with my kid and this wow. is the only time that I could do it. Hey, you know, I need to run to the grocery store and you know what's going on in this time. And this is the only time that I can do it. You know, um, is that OK? I want to be able to share those things. I want to be able to be open enough to say this is what's going on in my life. This is what I need. I understand we have work to do, but if I can't get those things done, I'm not going to be focused enough to perform anyway. So. How do you create that environment where people can feel open enough to share who they are and what they need? And then as leaders, can we be empathetic to say, yep, I get it. Do what you need to do. Let me know how I can help you. Let's check in another time and make sure things are still rolling. So that that empathy um, and that encouraging the 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 um, making sure people take care of themselves and not working too hard and not burning themselves out. Yeah. Making sure they have balance. All that stuff is important. That's awesome, man. So which, let's let's end with this one. So this is the the last one here, and I kind of wanted to um, <coughs> low key uh, have this one as the last. <laughs> so, oh, you, you pulled a switcheroo on me. I, I wonder what was going on. <laughs> yeah. So here's the last one: regularly reconnecting to vision. Yeah regularly reconnecting to vision because uh, as we've been saying all along here man it's so easy to get caught up right now with you know you're isolated you're doing a lot of different things you you're not always sure and as you do I, I i don't know about you man i feel busier i feel a little bit busier now because i've got so many virtual meetings and, and, and just things are back to back right absolutely so yep the busier that you become the easier it is to kind of lose focus or lose sight of where you're headed yeah right it yeah. can be easy to get your eye off of the prize or off of the destination so as a leader how can i regularly reconnect my people to what we're headed who we are 
why we yep. do what we do and where we're headed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> right. So, yeah. It, and, and we assume that a lot of times we, we assume that simply because people, they work for the company, they know the name of the company, they get a check or a direct deposit with the name of the company on it, that they really know what we're headed towards or where we're, yep. or where, where we're going. But people are inspired continually by leaders who have vision. And if you want to continually inspire your people, you've got to continue to remind them about that yeah. vision. And, and this is this is where to, to come back to your point. This is where storytelling comes in and why it's so important, because our vision is our story. Right. Yeah. That is part of our why. That is part of our purpose. That is the reason why we exist. And so we want to make sure that when we're having conversations and when we're engaging, we're not just connecting transactionally. Right. Yeah. You know, we're not just talking about deliverables and time and all that stuff. But why does this stuff matter? Where yep. does it fit in the grand scheme? Right. You're not just pushing buttons. You're not just um, sending emails. You're not just clicking on a screen. You are actually producing yeah. because it connects to something that's even larger than all of us. And so as as we continue to engage our people, it's important to make sure we connect them with our mission, our vision, our stories um, and our purpose. Awesome. 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 And I, I'm just kind of looking back through a few of these comments here. Jody says folks in the remote environment need to be OK with letting go of some control. Ow. <laughs> if the job gets done in the time it gets done in, there's no need to micromanage. All right. So yeah. that, that's, that's funny. That reminds me there was like a there was a little cartoon that I saw the other day. It was these three people in this office building and I don't remember the exact sequence of it, but pretty much it they were meeting and they were saying, now we got to figure out another excuse for people not to be able to work from home. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it was funny because, I mean, it's like we've got this this battle, this battle's been going on for, uh, I mean, it's over a decade at least. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This, this whole yeah. remote work, remote work from home, um, wh why you should, why people need to be in the office and are they more productive or less productive? And now you're in yeah. a situation where you have to be. You have to be. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you got, you got to be. And now your people are at home and you, you really have no choice in that matter. And so you got to just now figure out as a leader, how do I lead? How do I yeah. lead in, in, in that circumstance? Yeah, the 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 old uh, management by walking around, you know, we can't do that anymore. And, yep. and if you do walk around, you know, you're walking around digitally. You have a digital footprint. So so how do you do that? Um, you know, the 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 value of FaceTime of yeah. and I'm not talking about the app on your phone. I'm talking about being in someone's office where they can see you, you don't have those same um, uh, abilities now. And so. Yeah. You know, as a leader, you know, do you need to have meetings every hour because it's solving your need for FaceTime? It's solving your need to micromanage. You know, sometimes you do need to let go of control. And I think this is really a great opportunity and a great time for leaders to experiment with different behaviors. Yeah. Right. Because if it doesn't work, you say, oh, well, you know, I was new to this and I was just trying something else out and it didn't it didn't work for me. And you know, we'll be back in the office soon. But there may be a chance that you can try something out new that you never would have tried in the office or face to face. And it could have tremendously powerful results for you. And so this is the time to experiment. This is the time to try things out um, to get you out of your comfort zone, because I think we're all out of our comfort zones yeah. anyway. So, you know, we can stretch a little bit more. Yeah. And I'm going to say something that's this may be hurtful to some leaders, but I want them to hear it. I want them to hear it. Maybe one of the reasons that some leaders are micromanaging and going crazy in a time like this is because they themselves have lost connection to their why and their vision. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And so Absolutely. it's it's really about not just leading your people and reconnecting your people to what you're after. Sometimes as leaders, we ourselves need to go inside. We yeah. need to introspect. We need to now sit back and evaluate and say, my goodness, um, am I still on track? Am I still headed towards where I thought I was? Who was I when I started this journey? Um, you know, yeah. you remember you remember that young, enthusiastic cat that was like, yeah, I'm going to change the world. You know, yeah. am, I, am I still that person? Have I yeah. changed? 
And, yeah. you know, because I have people that I lead now, you know, what, who, who am I becoming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because we, we lose some of that. I mean, you yeah. know, a lot of us get promoted to become leaders because of our technical skills. Um, but our technical skills is not what makes us effective as leaders. Right. You know, yeah. our ability to engage and aspire and motivate. You know, those are the things that are really important for us right now. But if we're bogged down in meetings and yeah. emails and reports and, you know, we we lose that spirit that we initially had when we even decided, yep, this is this is the thing that I want to take on. This is this is the journey that I'm going to put myself on. This is the path that I want to walk now. And so. You know, getting back in touch with why did I even decide to do this? Why, what's in it for me? You know, yeah. it, it's got to be more than just a paycheck. Right. You know, I know you can't get that promotion and you can't get that bonus without accepting this new role. But it's got to be something more than that, something inside right. of you that makes you desire to be a leader and, and, and bring people um, across the finish line with you um, is really what you have to get in touch with. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So I, I, def I definitely want to, we're, we're right at about time right now, but I see some people asking if this is going to be um, available after this so that they can send it out to their staff. I see Judy's asking that. Um, a couple of people are asking some people, some other person, another person said, oh, uh, Egwu says we should put this on YouTube so that other people can access this after so yeah we definitely want to keep sharing this i love this conversation mike i love your yeah, energy bro yeah, we, were, yeah. <laughs> we were flowing man yeah man <laughs> yeah so these are our top 10 ways of staying connected as a virtual leader you want to get connect tell people how to connect with you mike so that they can um help you have you work with their teams or their organizations yeah. Yeah, so you can always go to my website um, or our, our company's website is pcgconsults.com. Um, mm -hmm. We also do systems engineering. Um, so you'll be able to see some information about our systems engineering as well as any of our training courses and programs. Um, if you want to connect with me via social media, MP Consults. Hey, Judy, MP Consults, <laughs> M-P-C-O-N-S-U-L-T-S um, is all of my social media um, so message me. Obviously, um, my LinkedIn should be near here somewhere and you can catch me on LinkedIn. Um, but certainly, you know, we would love to come out and, and work with your teams. And, you know, if you want me and Rob to come and do this session for you again, we would love to do that as well. All right. Cool. Let me see if I can get this on screen so people can see. So at MPCG Consults, is that correct? MPC, no G. No G. OK. All no right. G. No G. <laughs> <laughs> MP Consults. MP Consults. Okay. Yep. yep. The website is PCG Consults, but I won't confuse uh, you anymore. There we go. <laughs> At MP Consults. There we go. Yep. MP Consults. Go. That's that's my social media. You can message me. Yeah. Um, you know, do all types of training and keynote speaking and 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 partnering up with with um colleagues like Rob and you know some of us who are. I'm working in this field together. We we would love to come out and, and do some work with you and your teams. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So for those of you that were asking about this, yes, the live will be available for a little bit. We're actually going to download it onto our channels and get it onto YouTube on both of our YouTube channels as well. And yep. if you want to share it with your organizations, feel free to do that. We encourage you to do that. We're going to be having yeah. more of these conversations in the yeah. coming weeks. So look forward to hearing a little bit more. Get connected with us. Follow us. Uh, follow PCG on LinkedIn. Follow Kinetic Communications on LinkedIn. And then we're going to do some more of this. I'm, I'm excited about what's to come, Mike. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, it's, it's too bad it took this pandemic for this to happen. But, you know, um, uh, I think my my guy, Dave Martinez, the Nationals manager, he says sometimes bumpy roads lead to beautiful places. And so yeah. I feel like we got to a beautiful place. So so thank you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and connecting yeah. with us. I really enjoyed it. Um, feels like we just started talking. And so uh, yeah. I guess we got to they got to shut us up this time. But we're going to do it some more because we could do this for hours and hours and hours. All right, y'all. Well, we'll see you. Have an amazing week. Don't forget. Speak up. Speak out. Lead well.